<laughs> so this is the project house that I did a segment on what's wrong with my lawn and we found out that we have a ton of lawn debris. Back in April, we diagnosed this lawn using my five-step approach, and we came to the conclusion we needed to remove the lawn debris and the excess thatch in the lawn. Now I'm gonna show you how to shine this turd, and I'll also show you my results. To get this party started, we need to get the grass down below two inches. This removes enough of the live tissue so we can move on to our second step which is removing the dead debris off of the soil surface. Here's what I absolutely love about scalping a lawn. You really truly see the dysfunction that's going on in the lawn. All this brown stuff is prohibiting new growth to come up and out. And this is exactly what we need to remove. Scalp is done, man. Oh my gosh. We have uncovered a lot of problems here. I would say 40% of the grass is kaput, it's dead, but we have Kentucky bluegrass, so it's going to travel through the lawn once we get all this debris and the garbage out of the way, but oh my gosh. Dude, look at this. It's so much. And all this, the problem is, it's like bubble gum on the soil surface. It's just tying everything up. Can't do it, so I'm excited to rock and roll. Now to remove all the dead debris, I suggest using a dethatcher like the Sunja Ryobi uh, or the Rock and Rocker dethatcher and scarifier that has tines that look like this. Using a manual thatch rake is possible, but it's the worst job ever. It's a very taxing on your back. Typical with a, any dethatcher, we're going to start with the uh, highest setting first. Zeros for transportation. So we're going to drop that down to a one just to make sure that we don't scalp the grass. And then we're going to work down. I don't even know if I want to move on to setting two. One was actually pretty boss. Look at that. We're just about to soil surface. We'll, we'll try number two, but we're going to do it over here so you can actually see what's going on. So what I'm looking for is just making sure that we don't have too much live matter. And this is super permissible. When using dethatching devices, I use it like a lawnmower and I go over the entire lawn. And when I'm done, I use a blower to blow the clippings off. I find this method much easier than mowing the clippings up. After I'm done, I cross hatch my last dethatch pass. Then I'll do vertical passes afterwards. Now I'll commonly do three to four passes on a single lawn that's never been dethatched before and on this lawn I ended up doing four passes and these were my results. These results are fantastic but the job's not done. Now we attack the root of the problem which is the thatch. Thatch is the root mass that's slightly above and below the soil surface and we use a scarifier which is the cartridge that looks like a tiller to dig through and uproot the thatch. Similar to the dethatcher, we're gonna run a horizontal and a vertical pass. I'm using the lowest setting on whatever scarifier I'm using and I'm going to limit it to two passes. Holy cow, that scarifier went to work. This is just one pass. This is ridiculous and look at the amount of uh, thatch that we're pulling out there. All those roots. And the funny thing is it's all attached to dead grass. There's not, there's maybe, I don't know, 2% live matter in here. All this has just gotta go. The scarifier digs slits into the soil and rips through the thatch. This removes debris as well, but the primary function is to encourage new lateral growth by disrupting the thatch layer. In this lawn, I'm doing it to remove all the dead thatch and grass so the live grass can reestablish. So we gotta make it a little bit worse before we can make it better. Now that I've removed the majority of the dead matter and thinned out the thatch layer, I'm going to fertilize the lawn to encourage growth. I'm using a 10 10 in my local area considering I know our area has a has a ton of phosphorus naturally sitting in the soil. But the point of the fertilizer is really just to force a bit of growth. Any fertilizer will do, and just make sure that you stay at the labeled rate. So I was thinking about this last night. I want this area to recover and I want it to recover as fast as possible. 
I stressed it a ton because there was so much dead thatch in here that it left some of the areas thin. And having the area be thin is not too big of a deal. Um, the major issue is how fast is it gonna thicken up? So I thought to myself, okay, in the interim, what we could do is just overseed it with some rye just to, just to get it to thicken up initially and then we'll let the blue push against it. It's gonna be a real nice blend. The dishes are done, man. Well, it's officially time to pack up and leave and let mother nature do her thing. <laughs> I'm excited to see these results. Here we are back on the project lawn where we dethatched the living crap out of this lawn. There were parts of it that honestly, I was a little concerned about. We got grass and we got grass everywhere. Now all the areas that I was concerned about that really had no more grass growing through, it was just gray matter. Those are all completely gone. Now we've got a couple of areas um, that it looks like we've got some sprinkler coverage issues that we got to get figured out in the next process. But look at this area right here, right? This is the area that I just beat the crap out of. And it's got more grass than I can even tell. Um, <laughs> this is the area I was worried about most and it's the area that's got the most grass. Now this is the very special thing about Kentucky bluegrass when it comes to cool season lawns. Those rhizomes spread out. Since we hammered that thatch layer, it allowed those rhizomes to spread again and it is thick, thick, thick. I mean, look at this. Oh yeah, we've got grass and we've got a lot of it. So part one of this process of the front yard was really just to tear up that thatch layer and get the grass to thicken up. Now, in the up and coming weeks, I'm gonna tack this lawn, we're gonna take care of the weeds, and we're also gonna get rid of this dingy, dingy color. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Till next time, guys, with the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying lawns.